These are words I never thought I'd be saying, but I don't know if you can go back to Breath of the Wild after this game. Hey everyone, it finally happened. Tears of the Kingdom is finally out. And of course, it is very, very good. It just came out that it sold like 10 million copies in the first three days, which is just insane. Absolutely insane for a game to do, but also kind of expected, right? Like how could it not sell 10 million copies, you know? This game could be absolutely terrible and just ride on the branding of Breath of the Wild. It would sell that much anyway. Even if the game itself was really, really bad, by virtue of being a Breath of the Wild sequel, people will buy it. And that's exactly what happened. But luckily, the game is actually good. And of course, I've been playing a good deal of it myself, so I just wanted to do a video of some early thoughts and impressions of the game. No spoilers here, just gonna show footage of the very first area, that's it, so don't worry about that. I will probably do a full, like, in-depth, full review of the game later, uh, but for now, here's what I think so far. So obviously the first thing you're faced with is the sort of intro cutscene sort of stuff going on, and I have to say this already addresses what was most people's biggest complaint about Breath of the Wild, which was the lack of story. In this game, they make it very clear, like, hey, there is a thick through line, uh, an actual plot to be followed as you play through this game. You know, you still have open sprawling areas, go wherever and do whatever you want, but all the while, the story is much more structured, much more character driven. There's a lot more meat on the bones to dig into since the very, very start of the game you can see that starting to happen. So no spoilers, but the story is also really good. I'm liking it a lot, especially compared to the Breath of the Wild story, if you can even call that a story in the first place. But either way, first impression is already really good here. And once you start running around and hitting stuff with sticks, you will very quickly realize, oh, this is very much a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Same engine, same visuals, same gameplay style. It's all very, very familiar to anyone who has played the previous game. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, it's probably a good thing considering how many extra layers of mechanics they add on top of what was already in Breath of the Wild. Uh, but it is very much like a Majora's Mask sort of situation where it's a lot of the same sort of assets and style that is used in the game. And speaking of which, there is a lot to learn in this opening area. Even in my playthrough while I was playing, I was like, man, this just keeps going and going. Like, when does the game start for real? But it is absolutely worth it. Because of the tools they give you, you can hit the main game and just have a whole open world of creativity in front of you. A lot of the puzzles and like challenges and things the game asks you to do, it doesn't even outright tell you how to do it. It's just kind of like, hey, here's a big gap you need to cross. What do you want to do? And I will say it does take a while to get used to problem solving in this game. Like things like ascend, I just always forget to use for some reason. Like I, I look up and I'm like, how on earth am I supposed to get up there? I don't have nearly enough stamina for this. And I'm like, oh yeah, I have, I have an entire ability for doing this that I just completely forget is there most of the time. I'm used to it now, but, but for the first like five, six hours of the game, I, I just never remembered to use this one. And it's funny because Ascend is probably the most basic out of all the abilities. There's also Recall, which sort of rewinds time for objects, but even that one isn't too hard to figure out when you need to use it, because it's like, oh, this platform is rotating towards me and I can't get on it, so if it goes the other way, I can get on it. It's pretty, pretty evident when you see something that needs Recall, and that leaves us with Ultra Hand, the main sticking point of this game. You can use Ultra Hand to pick up and glue together pretty much any objects in this entire game. And saying that seems kind of crazy, but that's because it kind of is. Like, I don't know how they ever came up with this being the design philosophy for the game, but you use Ultra Hand all the time. It is your main ability in this game without question. And there's so much you can do with it. It's so versatile. You can build platforms. You can build carts to attach to your horse and pull things. You can build airplanes. You can build literally anything in this game. And honestly, I think that's what makes the problem solving in this game so fun is that you come to a challenge and you just think to yourself, oh, I wonder if I could 
use this platform and, and put a rocket on the back and then I'll put three fans underneath it and then it'll float up and I'll shoot forward. I wonder if that'll work. And then you try it and it doesn't work at all and you realize you're an absolute moron. So then you have to go back to the drawing board and say, oh, okay, maybe I'll do five fans underneath. Or, or maybe I need a rocket on the left and the right side. And you try again. And if that doesn't work, you're free to keep trying and keep iterating on your design or just give up and try something else. Oh, maybe I'll just build a campfire and I'll I'll throw a nut on it to shoot up in the air and have a current to blast me forward. It's, it's very, very open in how it lets you solve problems. And I know Breath of the Wild kind of already had that, but in this game, it's like amplified to 100. Like you have so many options for how you can do something at any given moment. It just absolutely blows the creativity like out of the water compared to Breath of the Wild. And then we have the weapon fusing, which I wasn't super in love with the idea of at first, but it's actually so simple in practice to just hit L and throw a rock on top of your spear. So now you can use it as a hammer to break open other rocks or whatever. Um, things like that are just sort of pretty easy to do. It only takes a couple seconds. So I actually don't mind it as much as I thought I would at first. And it's totally worth it because of how many options it gives you when it comes to the materials. In Breath of the Wild, one of my complaints was always that you spend the whole game collecting all these materials, and sure, you know, you use it to upgrade your equipment or you use it to make food. Other than that, that was it. You would just sell whatever you don't need and get a million rupees from all this crap that you've just been spamming Aeon as you run around fields. Uh, but in this game, Pretty much everything you pick up has some sort of effect when you put it on a sword or when you throw it or when you put it on an arrow, for example. So that means all of a sudden when you pick up a Hinox tooth, you're not just thinking, oh, this is worth like 20 rupees at the shop. You're like, oh, this gives me an extra 15 attack power. Should I put this on one of my swords? Should I use it on an arrow to kill something from far away that's a really tough enemy and I don't want to actually fight it up close? And you suddenly have all these different choices to make. Or it's still, should I save it and upgrade my equipment with it if I need it? So that just adds a little more depth and makes the material system of the game feel more worth it. It, it feels like it deserves to be there a bit more than it did in Breath of the Wild with just the food or the occasional upgrade. Now when I pick up an item for the first time, it's it's exciting because I'm like, oh, I wonder what this does. I wonder what this does on an arrow. I wonder what this does on a sword. I wonder what this does on a shield. That's the other thing too. I always forget that you can put things on your shield, which honestly is some of the best sort of crafting in the game because you can use them as like traversal options. You can put a, a spring on your shield, for example, and use it to bounce. Like it's, it's just crazy. You can literally do whatever you want in this game. And I can see why it took so long for them to make it because everything just feels so tight and so nicely intertwined with each other. So many different systems at play, and yet they all feel seamless to use together. Maybe a couple of like minor gameplay, not really spoilers, I just wanna talk about really quick, things to do with playing on the surface, on the actual map, exploring, you know, nothing actually plot related or, or main storyline related, but just like little tiny things that they changed or adjusted from Breath of the Wild. So if you wanna totally go in blind, maybe stop here, but, I'm being very, very cautious with my wording here. So yes, it is the same map. It is the same Hyrule from the first game. A lot of people seemed like they were gonna have a problem with that going into it, but in practice, it works totally fine. Uh, everything is actually different enough that it feels like you're rediscovering things anyway. It's not like you're just wandering through these areas like, oh, this is the same. Oh, I remember this place. Oh yeah, I just go up here and do this and talk to this guy and blah, 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 blah. No, all the characters are different. Well, not all the characters are different. That's not what I mean. They have different things going on is more what I mean. Also, another complaint people had about Breath of the Wild was where are the caves at? Why, why is it when I walk past a mountain or, you know, I'm, I'm going along the rocky beach, I, there's no caves anywhere. Caves are great in Zelda. Caves have always been in Zelda. Where are my caves at? This game has caves. They're like little mini dungeon sort of rooms, caverns, little, you know, areas to explore and kill everything and maybe get a cool item. It's perfect. It's exactly what they needed to be. I love 
love, 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 love that caves are in this game. They're probably maybe my most favorite part of just going out and exploring is finding a cool cave and seeing what's inside it. So I'm very, very happy to see that caves are in this game. I also want to say another level of polish that's really easy to see in this game. Anyone you talk to, and I mean anyone, literally any NPC in this game you can speak to and they will have something of value to say to you. It doesn't matter who it is, whatever no-name villager who's just walking by on the street, you stop and talk to them, they always will tell you something about the game. Oh, hey, did you hear the rumor about the monster at the base of the cliff that's north of here? Yeah, they say uh, he's got a really nice gem collection that you can find, but no one's ever come back alive. And you're like, ah, oh, damn, that sounds like a cool thing to do. I guess I'll go north and see if I can find this guy. Anytime you talk to anyone, someone will tell you, oh, I sent my friend out to this cave and he hasn't come back. I wonder what happened to him. Like, there's so, so many things going on. No matter who you talk to, they'll tell you to do something. You don't have to go do it, but you can if you want. You'll probably find something and get an item out of it or whatever. I think that just adds so much to like the world building of the game, right? Is that everything feels so alive and like these people are actually living and breathing and news is traveling between the towns. Like as soon as you think you're done playing for the night, you just randomly speak to someone or, or someone at a stable or a shop tells you something and you're like, ah, well, if I don't do that right now, I'll, I'll probably forget about it. So maybe I should go do that. And then before you know it, it's been three hours. So that's the kind of gameplay loop you get stuck in in this game. And my brain absolutely loves it. My one very, very tiny complaint with the game, I think, is the whole like ancient technology thing they have going on. Same as Breath of the Wild with the guardians and like ancient robots and there's a lot of that in this game too which i guess is sort of just like zelda's thing now to do ancient technology ancient ruins ancient civilizations that knew so much more than we do now and we're so advanced and that's fine it's just that my personal taste doesn't love that trope of like ancient technology but that's totally fine it's more than justified here just because you can use these things with your ultra hand to to build contraptions and have fans and wheels and rockets and whatever else you might need in order to make the crafting more fun so it's totally fine i get why that's the direction the story went in uh, i just personally don't love seeing that trope in my fiction but I will concede that that point is completely subjective, and honestly, it doesn't bother me that much anyway. It's just like the only negative thing I can think of that I could possibly say about this game. So 0.001% off the 10 out of 10 I'm giving this game so far. I think it's fair to say if you like Breath of the Wild, you will very much like this game. In fact, I would wager that you will like this game much, much more than Breath of the Wild, as crazy as that may sound. It's like the more I think about it, the more I realize this game compared to Breath of the Wild makes Breath of the Wild look like unfinished. It looks like a demo of Tears of the Kingdom, if that makes sense. I know it's crazy to say, because Breath of the Wild came out, it, it changed the landscape of open world games for the next six years. Like it's it's absolutely groundbreaking and what it did in 2017. But now in 2023, looking back, I don't know if you can even compare it to Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom just does everything Breath of the Wild did, but better, plus a hundred times more. Like, it's just such a night and day difference. It's crazy to me. Like, these are words I never thought I'd be saying, but I don't know if you can go back to Breath of the Wild after this game. Like, I'm not sure if there's a reason to go back to Breath of the Wild after this game. When you can scratch every single itch that Breath of the Wild scratches, but also get way more out of it, why wouldn't you just opt to play Tears of the Kingdom instead? If you haven't played it yet, it might be hard to believe, but it really is just that good. That's my first thoughts on the game. It's really, really good. All the mechanics that they've added are really, really complex, but the level of creativity and depth that they added is more than worth the extra complexity. It is a little tough to get used to at first, but keep at it because trust me, it is definitely, definitely worth it once you get the hang of it. This game's definitely worth your time. If you haven't played it yet, I'm excited for you because 
it is very, very, very fun, and it is very, very, very good, and you should, 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 should play it. If you are playing the game right now, let me know what you think so far in the comments with no spoilery kind of stuff going on down there, please. And, you know, let me know if you think I should do a full review of the game. I'm about 20 hours in right now, you know, two main sections down so far. Just having an absolute blast. So, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.